This session covers the healing mask and cloning mask tools that are available to us in Capture One. Now, in the May 2020 update, the healing tools were completely revamped. They were re-engineered from the ground up, and it's a very different way of working, and it's a workflow that saves a lot of time compared to the way that we used to do things. We're going to cover that in today's session, but before we do that, we're actually going to go into the differences between clone and heal so that we're all on the same page to start with. So here's a picture of our Golden Gate Bridge at San Francisco, and let's just zoom right the way in, probably to an unfair amount of 400%, to see there's a plane trail that's going through this night shot. Quite a normal scene, or normal thing to see in this sort of scene. So for the purposes of demonstrating the difference between cloning and healing, I'm going to stick to the old way of working uh, with the manual method, and then we're going to cover the new way of working in a second. So one difference you will notice in the update is we've now got a dedicated brush up here on our toolbar. So if I hold down the mouse button, we've got a choice now of draw a healing mask, which is the Q on the shortcut key, cloning mask, which is S on the shortcut key. S can stand for stamp if you want, and remove spot, which is O, and we've always had the spot tool, obviously. But not only is it up there, these tools are now mimicked here in the layers palette. So we've also got a healing tool here, and a cloning tool here, and that's alongside our radial mask and our brush and our eraser that were always there. So for the purposes of this session, let's create a new clone layer. So we're going to manually create a clone layer, and that shows us it's a clone layer with a little stamp tool. So even if I rename it to anything I want, we know it's a clone layer because the stamp icon is sat there. I'm going to choose my cloning mask tool, or I could have pressed S on the keyboard, and that gives me a brush just like I'm used to with all the normal settings that I'd have. So let's now start cloning. So let's get rid of the uh, light. Oh, and what's happened? Capture One has warned me to say, in order to clone, a source point must be defined. In other words, I can't just paint pixels from the middle of nowhere. I've got to tell Capture One where I want to take the pixels from and where I want to put them. So the way I do that is with the Option key. So Windows is an Alt key. On a Mac, it's the Option key. And I find an area that I like the look of. So let's try and stick to the same cable. And let's go for this part here, option key, and click once. That tells it its source point in orange. Now I decide where I'm gonna paint these pixels and just click normally with the normal mouse button and start painting. Now that's done a good job in terms of copying pixels from top to bottom, but it's done a horrendous job in terms of making it realistic. And the reason is because the clone tool literally takes the pixels that are up here and paints them wherever I've told it. So if there's any difference in, let's say, luminance or saturation or whatever, which there is in this case, it's pretty obvious, even as I start to zoom out, that while there's no plane trail there, there is something there that I've obviously repaired. So it's a bad botched job of a repair. So instead, we have the healing tool. So let's turn off our clone layer. So let's get back to our little plane trail. And I'm going to create a new heal layer. Exactly the same process. So let's go and choose our healing mask tool up here, or I could have pressed Q on the keyboard. This one's a little bit large, so I'm going to change the size of our brush. Um, hardness, I'm going to just increase a little bit. And opacity and flow, typically you want them at 100% because we obviously we want to repair the entire layer. There are cases where you'd want them down a little bit, but don't worry about it for now. Let's just leave them at 100. So exactly the same. I'm going to choose my source point. So I'm going to hold down the Option key or Alt key on Windows. That's my source. And I'm now going to choose where I want to start painting as my destination. So just with the normal mouse button, and start painting. Now, as I hold the mouse button down, we see a very similar effect to the clone tool. But when I let go, Capture One's now gonna do some calculations and blend that image or that repair in. So it's a bit like buffing a car repair. Effectively, it's matching the luminosity of the pixels around it, and it's making it look far more realistic in terms of a natural view of where a repair was done, rather than, just turn that heel layer off and turn the clone layer on, rather than literally a copy and paste from another area in the image. So that's the difference between healing and cloning. Now let's look at the workflow, because what you just saw there was actually the old way of doing things, which was I'd have to choose an origin and have to choose destination. So here's a picture from Iceland. Let's imagine we want to do some healing. So in the old way, I would create a new heel layer. Great. And I would actually use the brush tool as I was brushing a mask. We didn't have a dedicated healing tool. But let's say I'm using the brush layer, and I'm going to increase my brush size. And it's this lump that I want to get rid of here. This bit of ice is a bit distracting. So just like before, I would hold down the Option key. So let's say take it from here. And I would now start painting here. 
because this is the bit I don't want. And Capture One has done a very good job of hiding that piece of ice that I don't want, and it's used the texture and the content from this area here and pasted it over to that with some luminosity blending as well. Now, the problem with the old way was that every heel layer could only have one origin vector. So in other words, if I start painting here, it's going to take the same vector from this repair and place it up here. So it would take the vector from, let's say, this ice block. That's all fine, but if I want to get rid of this piece of ice here, I don't want to be copying parts of this ice block, because look what would happen if I took the same vector. Ooh. That's not great. And over here it gets even worse because if I want to get rid of this ice block on the right hand side, well the vector that we're currently using would take the source from off the canvas. There isn't actually any content to place there. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to create multiple different heel layers. And I used to end up calling them, you know, right to left, top right to bottom left, top to bottom. And with a 16 layer limit that's in Capture One, we have a challenge in terms of running out of layers very quickly if we're doing lots of healing. So in the new version, the update from May 2020, the engineers at Capture One have done a sterling job of getting rid of that horrible process and making something that's really, truly very intelligent. So let's uh, let's go back to our image where we were. So just a sky layer, that was just a uh, graduated filter on the sky and our background layer. Now let's imagine I was just on my little pointer tool and we want to get rid of this lump of ice on its own. No longer do I have to create a layer. I can either choose this tool up here for heal or this tool here for heal. Let's click on that one. I don't have to tell it an origin, I just draw. And if you look, I've still got the mouse button held down. Capture One has automatically now created a heal layer on the top left called heal layer one. It's automatically selected it and it started to paint. And it started to paint using an origin from over here. It's decided that's the best origin for me. We'll come back to that in a second. So what if I want to get rid of this one over here on the right now, just like I did before? Well, it couldn't possibly use the same origin because if it did, it would be off the canvas to the top right. So let's just draw and see what it does. It's taken a different origin. It's taken what it now believes is the best one for there. And let's get rid of this stone here. It's taken a new origin. Let's get rid of this one down the bottom. Another new origin. Let's get rid of this one. Another new origin. Let's get rid of this little cluster here. Yet another new origin. In fact, we could get very carried away here to the point where we're getting rid of every single other thing on the beach other than this big block of ice. Now, this is a big enough move on its own in terms of I'm not having to create origins. I'm not having to create different layers. So my layer stack here, if you notice on the left, is still heal layer one. There's only one layer here and it's doing all this healing. What happens is when you do the first healing brush, Capture One does some calculations. It might take a little bit longer than the uh, subsequent ones, but it's doing some caching of the image. And then effectively you can add as many heel layers, or sorry, heel points onto one heel layer as you can imagine. I've tried to break it. I haven't been able to. I've tried adding many, many, many points, um, even overlapping ones, ones that don't make sense. Um, the Capture One just keeps on going and going and going. So when we find the limit, I'll try and let you know. But for right now, I would assume it's pretty much limitless for most purposes of photography. So here is a layer, single heel layer with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different points, all with different origins. But some of the origins, as you can see, I'm not too keen on, so I don't actually like this origin here. So let's click on this one and just move the origin. That's better. And on this one up here, I don't want to copy this rock, so I'm just going to move that origin. This one here looked a bit wrong because it's taken for some reason the origin from the shadow and put it out here. So let's just bring it back out into the daylight and that'll blend that in nicely. Oh, a bit too much. So let's maybe go from there. That's better. Uh, this one's a little bit wrong, but let's just move that there. So I, what I've found is probably eight times out of 10, it guesses the origin pretty accurately, the correct origin. Um, on the times that it doesn't, you can just override it, there's no problem. And you can still create a manual one if you want to. So I can still hold down the option key and I can still paint with my own manually created origin. Now, if I paint near to that, you'll see it hasn't created another origin because what it's worked out is actually that origin is fine for this little cluster. And if I want to see the clusters, if I press the M key on my keyboard for mask, not only does it show me 
where I've actually painted and from what origin, but it's actually showing me the content of what was underneath the mask. So although I've got my mask on in red, I can now see the original content. If I turn the mask off, I see the blended content. So what we've got here is an option to be able to see before and after without having to turn the layer off and on. Now, this is an extreme example. I'm just using it to get, just to uh, show you how many points we've got. If I don't like these arrows that are disturbing me, well, A, if I move the cursor at any point off of the canvas, the arrows disappear. B, they only appear when I'm on that healing layer. And C, if I really don't like them, if I right click on the brush, I've got the option here to display arrows on or off. If I don't want it, I just turn that off and I don't see the arrows at all. But for me, it's quite useful to see the origins because I might want to fix them at some point. So that's the new healing layer. Um, now the clone layer, for exactly the same reason as before, we still need to create an origin. So while we've got some improvements here in terms of speed, we still have to do the origin work with a clone. So with a clone layer, we click on the stamp tool here, or the clone tool, either up here in the top menu or on the layers palette. And just like with the healing layer, as I start drawing, so let me just make my brush a little bit bigger so you can see it. So if I just started drawing here, it's going to say that same warning. In order to clone, a source point must be defined. Fine. And I'm going to say, here's my source. Now, the second I've set my source, exactly the same as heal, it's now created a new clone layer on the left-hand side. I can rename that if I want. But that source is now set, and as I paint, it's literally painting those pixels. It's not doing the clever stuff that the healing layer will do. It's not doing any luminosity matching. It's not doing any texture matching. But what it is doing is automatically creating the layers as and when I see fit. Now let's imagine I'm on my sky layer and I'm playing with the exposure. So let's say up here, fine. And I want to just do a quick heal. So let's change my brush here to healing mask and think actually I just want to get rid of this little block of ice down here on the right as well. Click, look what's happened. Capture One has automatically now switched me to the heal layer on the left hand side and it's automatically gone and created a new origin for that particular spot of sand. I'm just going to correct some of these because some of them I'm not a fan of where it's taken the origin from. Um, so where we're at as it stands is we've got a layer here which has got a, a lot of different uh, healing positions, a lot of different origins without having to create multiple different layers. But I still can if I want to. So if I create another heal layer with my tool, and let's draw that one there. So another heel layer on top of the original heel layer, that's still possible. You can still create multiple heel layers if you choose to. Same with clone, you might want one version of the image um, with that cloned out and one version without or so on. You can create a variant or you can just do it with the layers and their opacity. Now, if for instance, I was on that sky layer again and just happened to start clicking around with our healing tool, Again, Capture One is going to choose the uppermost healing layer. So it always chooses the one on the top automatically, and it's automatically going to choose an origin, and it's automatically going to paint it on. Now, with the old healing brush, if I tried to do that up on that sunshine, it would have just gone horrendously wrong. Um, on the new one, not only did it get it pretty right in the first place, but the ability to tweak it is actually really, really powerful, and we're into a good place from one click. So that's our heal and clone layers. Um, obviously, you can see how much more powerful they are. And actually, from a speediness point of view, compared to the old way of doing it, not only is it less clicks, but actually what I've found is Capture One now is a lot more responsive on the healing layers. What about fine tuning, though? So let's have a look in our San Francisco shot again. So now we know the easy way of doing it. I'm just going to press the Q button for my healing tool. I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller. Now, of course, just by pressing the healing tool doesn't create the layer. It only creates the layer when I start to heal. So I'm going to hold down the mouse button and we're just going to click along the line of that plane trail. And you can see it's created a new heal layer on the top left. And it should choose a perfect origin. Wonderful. Now, what happens if the origin was slightly out? Well, obviously we could click on the origin until it goes orange. And then I can move it around if I want to. But sometimes this can be a little bit fiddly. So here's a really, really cool trick in the new version. If I make sure the origin is orange, I can now move the origin in increments using the cursor keys on my keyboard. So if I want fine tuning one pixel at a time, 
I don't have to worry about holding down the mouse perfectly still. I can just literally use my cursor keys on my keyboard and shift it one pixel across at a time with each increment. So let's uh, let's just have a little look at some ease and uh, quick versions of doing this. So here's a shot from Mono Lake in California. Um, if, and I'm not saying we would, but if we wanted to get rid of these pebbles, um, a lot of people would look at this in the old way of working and think, oh, this isn't gonna go well. Well, let's give it a try. So here's my new healing brush. And I'm just gonna make our brush a little bit bigger to about there. And let's get rid of this rock. First one, it's doing that caching work. It's done a pretty good job. Let's get rid of this rock. Yep, yeah, this rock, this rock, this rock. All of these rocks, Capture One is working out the best origin to take the source from. And it's then blending the luminosity of the destination with the new pixels to make it look completely natural. So with one click per origin, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different origins on one healing layer. That was seven clicks after I pressed the healing tool and we've gone from that to that. That's pretty impressive. So the new heal brush uh, and the new cloning tools, really, really powerful tools, really get to know them, really get to use them, but the workflow has been made so much easier now I'm hoping everyone's going to enjoy using them rather than being scared when they load them up.